Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to knit a shawl like this one here. I call it Diamond Specialist because it is made of diamonds that build up row after row. The shawl proceeds asymmetrical, which means you start at one tip, then work the slant here on the left side and the right side stays straight. As you can see, the shawl is very soft and stretchy because we knit it loosely and also the pattern looks nice and even. Also, these grids in between the diamonds make it light and nice to wear. They add a nice effect to the pattern. Let me measure the gauge for you. That means I measure how many stitches you'll have per 10 cm. Here we have 2, 4, 6, 10 stitches for 5 cm, which means 20 stitches for a length of 10 cm. So if you start by knitting a gauge, try to get the same amount of stitches. If not, your pattern will be a little bit tighter or even looser than this one here. But you can decide for yourself how you like your pattern best. For this straw right here, I used this color, which is color number 25 of my Wooly Hux Bubble Cotton. The bubble weighs 200 grams, runs 800 meters in length, and it consists of 50% cotton and 50% polyacrylic. I'm using needles size 4.5, that's a size 7 for the UK and US. You can see the stitches are knitted loosely. I knitted the right side row with needles size 4 and the wrong side row with needles size 3.5. The reason for that is that I work the wrong side rows looser than the right side rows and it helps to achieve an even pattern when you work the wrong side row with the needle a little bit smaller. All needles are from my Wooly Hucks needle case and with that you can combine your hooks and needles any way you want. That goes for crocheting, knitting, knit crochet, nuking, everything's possible. And the cords are here in the zipper pocket. Multiple cords in various lengths. For this tutorial now, I'm going to use double pointed needles, because I don't want this cord to keep clacking on my table and distract you while watching. But here too, I will use needles size 3.5 and, and 4. I put a link to the needle cases and the yarn I'm using below this video. For this tutorial, I'm going to use a different color. I have this left over from another pattern I did a video on and because I don't want to start a new bubble for every video I make, I try to use up my leftover yarn this way. Or I just undo my work after I finished a video, because sometimes I only work a small part of the design anyway and not the whole thing, just to show you. Also, this time we will learn how to read a written pattern while working on the shawl. Alright, enough said, let's begin. As you can see, our written pattern starts down here with row number 1. In row 1, we can see 4 boxes. One of these boxes is a U, which is a yarn over, which means I have to cast on 3 stitches. This border stitch, this one in garter stitch, and another border stitch. And with the yarn over, we already increase 1 stitch in this first row. I'm going to start with a smaller needle. So if you want to work with two different needles as well, start with a smaller one and cast on three stitches. One, two, three. Also, I'm going to put the number of the current row up here for you to see. Slip the border stitch. Then knit one stitch in garter stitch. That's the box marked with an X. Which means I knit that stitch in the right side and in the wrong side row. Then yarn over and knit the border stitch. With that, row number one is finished and you have four loops on your needle. Then you turn your work, purl the border stitch on this side. Then we also purl the yarn over. Then we knit the one in garter stitch. 
and then knit the border stitch. We again turn our work and start with row 3. On this side we slip the border stitch. Row 3 starts with a border stitch, one in garter stitch, one knit stitch, another yarn over to increase one, and another border stitch. We did the border stitch, next the one in garter stitch, that one we knit, the next is the one in stockinette stitch, so knit that as well, but this one we purl in the wrong side row. Then we yarn over and knit the border stitch. And now we have 5 loops on our needle, meaning we again increase one stitch. We increase one in every right side row. On this side we purl the border stitch as well as the yarn over. Then purl the following stitch as well. And then the next one is in garter stitch, which means we knit that one. And then we knit the border stitch as well. Next is row number 5. In row 5 we again knit the border stitch and the following one in garter stitch. Then knit 2 more stitches, yarn over and the border stitch. Slip the border stitch on this side, then knit the next in garter stitch, knit the next two stitches, then yarn over and knit the border stitch. That was row 5 and now we have 6 loops on the needle. Next is row number 6, the wrong side row. On this side we purl the border stitch. Then purl all following stitches as well except for the last two loops on the needle. These are the stitch and garter stitch, so knit that one, and the border stitch, which we knit as well. Then in the next row, which is number 7, we knit the border stitch. Then knit the one in garter stitch. Also knit the following two stitches. The next one we knit through the back loop, yarn over and knit the border stitch. So slip the border stitch. Then knit the next one in garter stitch. Then we need 2 stitches, and the next we knit through the back loop. So insert your needle into the back loop as if you wanted to purl that stitch, but then knit the stitch and that way the stitch twists a little bit. Then yarn over and knit the border stitch. Next is row number 8, which is another wrong side row. Purl the border stitch, purl the yarn over, and then again purl all stitches except for the last two. And the remaining two stitches we simply knit. Next is row 9. And we start row 9 by knitting the border stitch. Then knit one in garter stitch. Then knit one more stitch. Then after that we knit two stitches together. Then yarn over, knit one stitch through the back loop, yarn over one more time and then knit the border stitch. 
Don't worry, I won't explain every single row of this written pattern to you, and not for the entire tutorial. I just want you to see and learn how to read such a written pattern, so for the first couple of rows I'm going to show you. I put a link to the written pattern below this video. In row number 9 we again slip the border stitch, then we knit the next stitch in garter stitch, then knit one more stitch, knit two together, yarn over, knit the next stitch through the back loop, which means we insert here as if to work a purl stitch, but then work the rest of it like a knit stitch. Now yarn over again and then knit the border stitch. And we can start row 10. In the wrong side row we purl the border stitch, because this is the slant and that needs a bit more space. And after that we again purl all stitches up until we only have two loops left. Then knit the second last one in garter stitch and the border stitch. Next is row number 11. And in this row we start by knitting the border stitch, then knit the one in garter stitch and after that we knit two stitches together. Yarn over, knit another two stitches together, yarn over, knit one stitch, yarn over one more time for the increase and at the end knit the border stitch. Slip the border stitch, knit one in garter stitch and then we start the pattern. Knit two together, yarn over, Knit two stitches together, yarn over, knit one stitch for the increase, yarn over, and then knit the border stitch. In row 12, I purl the border stitch, then purl all stitches until I have only two loops left on my needle. which I then knit. And because the wrong side rows are always the same, I'm not going to show you each and every one of them. In row 13 we have the border stitch, then one stitch in garter stitch, yarn over, and then here we have a new symbol. This means we slip one stitch, then knit the next two together and pass the slip stitch over. All the symbols are explained on your written pattern, so don't worry if you can't remember them all at once. After that you yarn over, then knit three stitches, yarn over and knit the border stitch. On this side we slip the border stitch, then one stitch in garter stitch, Yarn over and next we slip one stitch, then knit the next two together and pass the slip stitch over. After that you yarn over, then knit three stitches, yarn over and knit the border stitch. Next is another wrong side row. Row number 14. And as always, we purl the border stitch and then all following stitches. Up until only two loops are left, and then knit these two remaining stitches. In row 15 you slip the border stitch, 
one stitch and garter stitch, then knit one through the back loop, yarn over, pass one stitch over, knit one, two, three, four stitches, yarn over, and then the border stitch. Alright, slip the border stitch, knit the next and garter stitch, knit one through the back loop, yarn over, pass one stitch over. For that, you slip a stitch, then knit the following one, and pass the slip stitch over. Then knit four stitches. Yarn over for the increase and knit the border stitch. This is row 16, which is another wrong side row. So we purl the border stitch as well as all following stitches except for the last two. And at the end, we knit the last two stitches. In row 17, we knit the border stitch, then knit one in garter stitch, yarn over, pass one stitch over, yarn over again, slip one stitch over, then knit four stitches, yarn over to increase one, and knit the border stitch. Slip the border stitch. This is row 17. Knit one in garter stitch. Yarn over. Pass one stitch over, meaning you slip the first, knit the second, and then pass the first over the second. Yarn over and pass another stitch over. Then knit 4 stitches, yarn over to increase 1, and knit the border stitch. And you already know how to work the next row. Purl all stitches except for the last two. and then knit these two stitches. In row 19, we slip the border stitch, then knit the following stitch in garter stitch, knit one stitch, yarn over, pass one stitch over, yarn over, and pass one stitch over. Then knit one, two, three, Four stitches, yarn over to increase one, and knit the border stitch. Alright, slip the border stitch, then knit the following stitch in garter stitch, that always stays the same, then knit one stitch, yarn over, pass one stitch over, Yarn over and pass one stitch over. Then knit four stitches. One, two, three, four. Yarn over to increase one and knit the border stitch. Next is row number 20. This is the last wrong side row I'm going to show you. Purl all stitches except for the last two. Then 
two stitches left and we knit these two stitches. And now you can already see how we have this land building up here and over here the grid which will later frame our diamonds. Now let me show you row 21, because after this row you can continue with the second part of this tutorial. The 21st row starts with the border stitch and the one in garter stitch. Then we knit two stitches, yarn over, pass one stitch over, yarn over, pass one stitch over, knit three stitches, knit one stitch through the back loop, yarn over to increase one, and then knit the border stitch. All right, slip the border stitch, and then knit one in garter stitch. Then we knit two stitches, yarn over, pass one stitch over, yarn over, pass one stitch over, knit three stitches, knit one stitch through the back loop, yarn over to increase one, and then knit the border stitch. And row 22 you can now do on your own. As you know, you purl all stitches except for the last two which you knit. That always stays the same. And with that, you have the 22nd row. And how to continue after this row is what I'm going to show you in part 2 of this tutorial. In part 2, I won't show you the wrong side rows anymore. Only the right side rows with the pattern. Alright, see you again in part 2.